Three, two, one, lights, camera, action, yeah! Here we are, continuing our discussion on narrative storytelling. We are now on lesson 1.3, parallel stories and screenwriting or script formatting, whatever you want to call it. So what is a parallel story? Okay, well, up to this point, all of the lecture videos that we've watched have focused on a single protagonist going on some journey where they have to, you know, find something that they're looking for, overcome obstacles, and ultimately change as a person, okay? With parallel stories, we don't necessarily have that, that one single protagonist, right? We might have several main characters, and the film does not deliberately prioritize any one character, right? Again, there is no main character. There might be five or ten, or if this was David Simon's The Wire, hundreds, right? Um, so it requires a lot of work on the part of the audience, right? Because you have to sort of remember all the different storylines of all these different characters. Um, but believe it or not, if you like watching movies like this, uh, they've scientifically been proven that they make you more intelligent because it requires so much work on the part of the audience. So by all means, if you like these kinds of movies, then then keep watching them because you're 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 increasing your intelligence without even realizing it. Anyway, um, by the end, there is often a connection between the narratives. Some, if not all of them, okay? You've got this character over here doing this thing, this character's over here doing this thing, this one's over here, and that one's over there, and, you know, we spend a little time with one, then we go to two, then three, then four, back to one, back to two, back to three, back to four, whatever, and then by the end of the film or the story, they all sort of come together, right? Um, that would be an example of a parallel story. Uh, some R-rated examples that you might want to check out when you turn 17. Uh, certainly Magnolia, one of my favorite films. Traffic. Uh, Dazed and Confused, uh, excellent films, uh, certainly worth <laughs> certainly worth checking out, but again, not until you're 17 is what the MPAA rating system says. Um, but let's talk about Dazed and Confused, okay? It's the last day of school, and all of these different students, uh, not just at the high school, but at the middle school, are sort of transitioning, um, you know, from one year to the next. We meet Randall Pink Floyd, who who I guess most people would say, yeah, he's the main character, but, you know, we spend about as much time with him as any of the other characters. Um, he's sort of the everyman who just kind of weaves in and out of all these different stories. He's sort of friendly with everybody. Um, his coaches want him to sign um, some loyalty contract, and he doesn't want to do it. That's sort of his his big problem throughout the film. Uh, but he comes and goes in and out of all the other different stories. We've got the jocks who are terrorizing the incoming freshmen. We have Darla, who's a cheerleader, and she's terrorizing the incoming freshmen. You start to see a theme here. We've got um, uh, O'Banion uh, terrorizing freshmen, and we see what ultimately happens to that guy. He's really like the only unlikable character in the entire film. It's just, it's just a fun hangout movie where you get to meet all these you know, wonderful characters. You get to pick who you want to identify with. You're like, oh, I was him in high school, or I, I'm her, or whatever. Um, and you get to spend a little bit of time with each of these characters, right? You've got Mike, Cynthia, and Tony, who are these nerds who are just kind of looking to have some fun. You've got Pickford and his failed attempts at having this party, I guess. Uh, you've got Mitch, the eighth grader, who's sort of making this transition from middle school to high school, and his sister Jody. I don't really remember what she had to do in the movie. Uh, you've got this other eighth grader, Sabrina, who's an incoming cheerleader, and she's sort of, you know, the, 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 the reflection of Mitch. So yeah, Dazed and Confused, an excellent film that you should definitely watch in a few years, right? I don't want you guys to get any ideas. But uh, yeah, an excellent example for talking about parallel stories. And interestingly enough, it's a film that does not have a plot, right? All of the lecture videos that you've watched so far have talked about films having a plot, right? Uh, some sort of <laughs> story that we as an audience are invested in, right? Uh, Days and Confused, not so much. It's just a cool hangout movie. You put it on, pay attention, don't, doesn't matter. Just have some fun. We didn't even talk about Wooderson. You know, all right, all right, all right. Anyway, let's talk about script writing format or screenwriting format. Um, basically, when you're looking at a script, like you see right now, 
um, they're all formatted the same. Over on the left hand side, in all caps, we have a scene heading, which is just a single line telling the reader where and when we are. Underneath the scene heading, we have the action, which is telling the reader basically what's happening in the scene. And then centered and capitalized, we have the character names, and below the character names, we have their dialogue. Over on the right hand side, we have any transition notes that you want to give to the editor to let them know, hey, we're dissolving to a new scene, we're cutting to a new scene, whatever. Uh, so, your lab assignment for this week. I want you guys to add a parallel story to the last lab assignment that you did. Remember last time you guys did those eight point story circles, you had the A story and the B story. Well, now I want you to add a parallel story. So if you remember my example, it was a guy driving down the road, he gets a flat tire, he has to change that tire. That's the A story. The B story is he's got a kid in the car or a wife in the car who doesn't respect him. And by going through this process, um, he, gains their respect, I don't know. Um, but now I wanna add a parallel story to that. So I'm going to maybe insert uh, a new family driving down the same road in the same rainstorm. And where are they going? And what is their sort of, you know, dynamic? Um, and I'm gonna cut back and forth from my original A story of the guy needing to change his tire to my new family driving down the same road, back to my guy changing the tire, back to the family, and then at the end, they're gonna come together somehow, okay? So that's what I want you guys to do. You're not adding a B story, you already have the B story. Now you're adding a parallel story. I, once you have that, I want you to write a short script where the two stories come together at the end. And I just put A, B, oh, that's, that's confusing. I shouldn't have put A and B. Let's put one and two, all right? Uh, first story, second story, first story, second story, and then at the end, they come together and that's the end of your script, okay? It has to be properly formatted. If you need any help, there's a great website called Celtics, C-E-L-T-X, that can help you with all the formatting. You can do it in Word, but it's a lot more complicated because you're gonna have to do all the aligning yourself um, but there is some great free screenwriting, script writing software out there um, that I'll put some links down below. Uh, for this week, we're going to view a film called Hannah and Her Sisters, directed by Woody Allen. Um, sort of a problematic guy, but uh, he made some great movies there in the uh, 1970s and 80s. So we'll talk about Hannah and Her Sisters in more detail um, soon, but uh, it's an excellent film that makes good use of several parallel stories. Even though the title suggests that Hannah is the main character, I don't think she is. I don't think the film spends any more time with her than uh, her sisters or her ex-husband. I don't know. Keep a clock when you're watching it. Keep a clock and see which, uh, which character gets the most screen time. I'm gonna bet it's not Hannah. Email me guys if you have any problems, questions, or just talk to me in class. Bye.